send it to you. Okay, bet. Yo, 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 what's poppin'? It's the Good Life Podcast, the kickback. It's your boy, Good Life Rush. Hey, thank y'all for tuning in to another session, man. Um, I got to say this every time, man. I got to thank y'all. This wouldn't be a show without the viewership, without the watchers, without y'all keeping these conversations going. You dig? And you know we're here. We're a show about mental health. We're a show about healing and love and finances. We're a show about talking shit and owning your truth and using your voice and finding your gifts and your purpose. But most importantly, we're here for self, man. We're here to take care of ourselves so we can take care of each other's. So make sure y'all share this shit, you dig, with your, your your goldfish, your ex, your grandma, anybody you think will watch this, share it with. Because we definitely got a special guest in the building today, man. I, I love the first timers. This is a different type of energy and vibe because y'all don't know what to expect. So that talk. shit is about to go. I've been looking for this, looking at this brother's social media for a while now. You know what I mean? And I'm impressed, man. The message he gives out, the energy he gives out. The way people respond to his message, that's what I pay attention to most. I watch how people respond to how you move. So I'm proud to have you on the show, bro. I, I ain't going to keep going on. Can you tell the people who you are? Man, I'm proud to be here, bro. My name King Thunder, man. Straight about Columbus, Ohio. Uh, been a long time coming, bro. You know, I appreciate the, the reach out for real. Yes, sir, man. It, it was it was due. You know what I mean? Yeah, later, you got a you had a couple of things you said online. I'm like, oh, yeah, I want to dissect this. You know what I mean? But not in a way where it's like I had things I really wanted to talk about. I'm like, I want to hear what he got to say. You know what uh-huh. I mean? Because you know how somebody could say some shit and you like, oh, yeah. I wonder how you think about other things. Real shit. Real shit. You dig? So we had to get you to the forefront, man. Um, how it's you blessing, feeling? Bro. How's your life? How's your day? Man, today was actually very – um productive man i ain't stopped today man i was on the grind shit i'm talking about the hustles at all time high at this moment for real for real and where i just came from nobody can even have a clue bro just because i keep my energy high you know what i'm saying i keep my positivity even in the worst of times like people don't even yeah like when you when you get to ask me certain kind of questions man it's gonna be a lot coming out this month in conversation oh, I'm bro. Excited, bro. I'm and, excited. and i'm one of them people though man I'm, I'm gonna tell you the real like it's not no you know i i ain't with the the fad that people trying to like hide their true identity a lot of people don't like to talk about they true real shit you know what i'm saying it's like yeah. Everybody want to put on a facade for the internet, and I'm just real, like, because I don't be caring how people feel about me, per se, because it just be like, I'm comfortable with who I am, you know what I'm saying? And, you know, yeah, and that's, and that's important in this social media age, you know what I mean? Because it's a mm-hmm. lot of things you can be this day and age. Bro. And half of them ain't real, like you would say. <laughs> thank, thank, I just, I lost that, that that fake it to make it attitude the materialistic yeah. attitude like i i didn't learn the game of discipline and emotional intelligence to i think i ain't completely at my all-time high but i feel like i'm dumb high on emotional intelligence for real yeah i feel like having a comprehension of it is a good place to start a good place to be a lot of people ain't you know reviewing and checking into that and that's, the only thing that, that, I, that's what makes us us you know what I mean? That's what separates us from like animals and robots is our emotional intelligence. Facts. A robot can do your job <laughs> and press these numbers. Uh, you dig? Real but shit. It can't make decisions like you can. That's a fact. That's a fact. You feel me? So I think we're getting to a point now where it's like people have to be emotional intelligent just to separate themselves in this industry. You know what I mean? Now they got AI and now they got different shit going on they trying to replace the human experience oh god you know oh, what i'm god. saying like it's crazy because that's, that, that's so that's the place where i first seen you at was the music so i see you know they got the ai's doing music they got the ai's doing art like which how you feel about that that's wild to me bro to me uh i feel like Knowing thyself is the most important thing you can do at this moment. And a lot of people are just lost in and, and their brains is going from one one type of characteristic to the other, like sporadically as fuck. Like people just 
I don't know if they confused if the fact that this planet is shifting into a new dimension is is making people's mentals like spin around at the fucking speed of light and shit like to where they just don't know how to feel and how to react to shit and you know it's people going from a positive vibe to a negative vibe in the next second which i fucking can't stand yeah you know what trying I'm to call it bipolar and shit that ain't bipolar you just don't know nah shit. nah it, and it could not even be that it could literally be the fact that you know as human beings some people just i i think these planets and shit like that moving around they're moving in the way that i mean just think bro it was just 40 degrees it's may and shit like right you know what I mean? The pole That's shift wild. is real. Like, see, people ignore what's right in front of them and shit, and they be like yeah. crazy to me because you go to the grocery stores, food shortages. You drive down the street, you see businesses closing that been open since I was a kid. Like, and and people overlook that shit, and I'm just seeing it in clear view. Like, bro, y'all don't see nothing wrong with this shit at all. Yeah, and I see both sides, you know what I mean? I don't agree with it, but I see why they overlook it. Because when you acknowledge something, you got to do something about it. Oh, God. You know what I mean? It's easy to pretend like something's not happening. That Because a lot of people a lot of people weren't the bully. Let's call a spade a spade. And I'm not saying they were bullied, but they weren't the bully. They don't Man. understand how to be direct. They don't understand how to take control of life. They just allow life to happen to them. That's real. That's real. And that's the matrix, man. Yeah, all day. Like when I then you're getting mad day. and you don't even know why you're upset or man. who to be upset with. The homie said one of the homies said, "Man, man, uh, uh, free Rashad Jamal." The homie said a lot of people was looking left and right. They don't ever look up and down. You know what I'm saying? They just stuck in the robot mode. You know what I'm saying? Just the motherfucking mm -hmm. woo, 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 and they just work, work, da da da. Like, you want to know what's crazy, bro? Yeah walking through like parks that i walk through to just get my peace and my meditation i literally scan shit with my google app and find out what kind of plant it is if they got health benefits or not and i done found five medicines in the national parks that we got franklin park balcony woods and that's just two of them wow. i done found at least five six medicines that i can pinpoint tell people what it is and it's people jogging past the shit. it's people just walk in doing they exercising but they don't have no clue what they walking past yeah yeah i mean so it's just kind of like yo if the world came to shit and just think about it the cbs on broad and james is closed down that shit been open since forever and it's like when you think about medication and people taking certain kind of medication to heal themselves not knowing that they can do it by making the tea out of these herbs that's right growing out the ground on the every day Mm -hmm. and, and me, the more I scan and the more I research, I done had people tell me that I think I'm full of myself because of my knowledge and shit. <laughs> and I'm like, bro, I'm trying to teach motherfucking shit y'all need if shit go bad. So it's I'm like, I found a cure for cancer in Black Lake Woods, and it's a lot of it. Anti-cancer, and it can heal cancer. And people like, I mean, they look at me like, I ain't think you love it all. And shit. Motherfucker, <laughs> I'm learning like right you feel me i ain't doing nothing that the uh, motherfucker that's in tune ain't it's more it's a lot of me's out here yeah i ain't the yeah. only one yeah. you know what i mean so i don't know bro I, there's different soldiers in the army you know there's people who broadcast things and there's people who do it behind the scenes there's a lot more people behind the scenes than actually talk about these things that's true that's, that's true and that's what people are going to come to understand, the ones that do. You know, we're not trying to recruit you. I'm trying to give you options. I'm trying to oh, give God. you perspective. I'm trying that's to give that. you a different life. I can't even promise you a good or bad life. I'm trying to give you a different life. Because the way you talk, the way you move, the way you post, you don't look like you like the life you got. <laughs> Man. You look like you hate it. You like you trying to get away from it. Word. Word. Real shit. And it's like, you know, we might have to work every day to get to the bread, but at the same time, you got to get to the point to where you will be just as happy without it. You know what I'm saying? Because yes. at this time of life, you know, the, 
I just watched a video where a man broke down the government system of buying houses and the interest and how you end up broke and actually in the negative trying to keep up with the government. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And me, I look for ways to keep myself above the government. I like working jobs where I got time, where I can work less and make more. And if I got to work more, I'm a haul ass for like four or five months and stack my bread up to an all time high. And mm -hmm. then I'm going to adjust myself to go back into entrepreneurship to get out of the system of um, corporate living. You know what I'm saying? Corporate lifestyle. You know what I'm saying? You spending so much time out your day working, working, and not no time for yourself. You know what I'm saying? So, like, the goal is to find out how to make money with doing less work. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, and then if you can't make the bread doing less work, then people need to know how to figure out how to grow their own food, how to find water if there's all this contamination that just happened in Ohio, only like yeah. two hours away from here. We don't know if our water poison is or not. So it's like, okay, where can you get natural water from if none of the water that we can get from you know the state or the government system is good for us no more do people know where to go do people know where to find it at do people know that they can punch a hole in a maple tree and put a tube in it and drain water out of a tree after it rain because the because the the rain go through the leaves and go through the stems and go through the branches and they come down the tree trunk into the roots of the tree so you could poke a hole in the side of a maple tree, put a tube in that motherfucker with a bucket and drain sweet water out of a maple tree. A lot of people don't know that. But so I try to give people that information because it's like, I ain't going to go hungry or thirsty because yeah, I walk in parks, I scan shit, figure out what it is. And then I research shit. I don't take people's word for nothing. So if I learn something, then I research it to make sure that that is real or not. Yeah. And, and then I just absorb the information, code it, and then stuff that's bullshit, I discard. You know what I'm saying? It's kind of like an Amazon shopping cart. You're going to put a whole bunch of shit in your shopping list, but you might only buy some of it. You feel me? So you buy what resonates to yourself, and then the rest of the shit just going to be there in the cart that you feel like you don't need right now. So, you know, it's just perspective, man. And I think that's a part of my emotional intelligence is being able to see massive perspectives and not say what's right or wrong. It's yes. understanding somebody's perspective, even if I don't agree with it. You feel me? Man, that takes a lot of security. <laughs> <laughs> ridiculous you know what i'm saying and we on a we only the tip of the iceberg of this conversation right now man and that's the beauty of you know learning that's the beauty of education and, and transcending is you become unrelatable you know I've, I've battled with this most of my life trying to um really really become you know woke like awoken and shit and still have like a social life and friends and you know what i mean well, like the, the two butt heads the two yeah. conflict each other a lot, you know. Um, but I got faith. I, I tell people all the time, our generation, I'm 34. So I tell people all the time, um, we're the golden era. We grew up without technology and now we're the ones running it. Yeah. So we 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 got we different too. We rebels, we intelligent, we hustlers, mm -hmm. we, we dangerous, <laughs> you know what I mean? We different, all that. we different, bro. I look through history and I'm I'm a big historian. So I look through history. I've never seen people as well-rounded as us. Man, and, and not at all. And I consider myself like a, you know, not I don't compare myself to people, but, you know, Tupac was, I only cried over two rappers' deaths, and that was Nipsey and Tupac. Oh, yeah. You yeah. feel me? And, and look what kind of people they was. Revolutionaries. Yeah. They was smart. They was moving how they needed to move. They was ahead of their time. Funny and when I, they needed to be. Charming. You feel they me? Jack of all trades. Jack of all trades. And I feel like like that's me. You know what I'm saying? It's like just think about all the stuff Tupac did from movies to the motherfucker did ballet. You know, we did 
arts. You know what I'm saying? The mother yeah. wrote poems. The mother was a revolutionary. He was in Black Panthers for real with his mama. Yeah. Like so many different avenues that he took. And then you look at me, I write books, I do digital design, I came out with my own liquor, fucking, it don't stop. It's like, I almost don't run out of shit to try. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Even if it don't work, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's just like, where where you gonna go if you don't try something? Get out your box, you know what I'm saying? Now, fame and fortune is something I'm not attached to because where the money coming from? Yes. The more money you make, it's like who cutting them checks? It's coming from an evil source. Money is the root of all evil in the first place. Yeah. So somebody that's always talking about chase the bag, chase the bag, chase the bag, it's like, bro, your brain is fucked up. Yeah. Because it's okay to do that. But when your soul is too connected to it, you would do anything for the bread. Yeah. That's why I don't trust a lot of motherfuckers because Dang. if I can't, just like I said, if you can't, if a motherfucker steal a quarter from me, you will steal a hundred dollars. Yep. And that's just how that's how my mind said it. You would is. take ten thousand. You would take a million. You would clean me out. You would clean me the fuck out, bro. If you steal anything, so that's why I don't put that past nobody. If, if I count my little coins up inside of a trash, and, and I got it in a bro, I got a cup full of change. <laughs> and, and and if I and if I let somebody stay in my crib and I counted my change and I got the exact amount of what it was and then a the motherfucker is still just 50 cent you got to get up out of here yeah because I already know what the fucking time it is because then if I flash my gold and you see it yeah then you like oh shit that's some shit I'm gonna go ahead and get that you know what I'm saying then I'm gonna have to do yeah. something I don't want to do to you you know what I'm saying like and then it's and I'm and I'm for the people you feel me? I'm against black on black crime. I'm against, and I'm a mutt. I got literally like eight different backgrounds in my bloodline. You feel me? Mm -hmm. And they even stem from European, Brazilian, German, Scottish, Irish, all that shit. And then the black side, East African, East Asian. Okay. Yeah, I'm saying Native American, Mexican. Like, I know exactly what is in me. At this point in my life, I got a book of that. I got two books in my hands right now that show my history from before slavery through slavery to now. And I only I'm only missing one more book of one more strain in my family that leads to Pocahontas being my 14th grandmother. And that's the only back. That's only that's the only book of stuff that I'm working on getting. And then I got my whole entire where I came from in my hands. You feel it's me? The bloodline. That's crazy. crazy. And most people don't even like dig for that. Yeah. Yeah. But I tell I tell everybody like I think some people scare what they'll find. Facts. Or and they scared to that to understand that we may be like say for instance our dad and mom had us. Mm -hmm. That don't mean that our genetics is just our dad and mom. We got right. we got genetics from our his like way. I had powerful people in my family, motherfuckers that own castles. Like I mean, come on, man. Pope they I sound like go getters. If man. you got a lot of cultures, that they, they was go getters. They was travelers. They was getting around. You feel me? Like Pocahontas worked with the colonizers and try yeah. to help her Native American tribe. You feel me? And you know how that shit go. As soon as you get a little bit too smart. Yeah. Then they like ah oh, kill her ass, yeah. And, and that's, that's what they that, did. Yeah. But I, but that's the beauty of us, you know. I I see the black in all colors, you know, all the the browns. <laughs> I see black. That's you dig? That's so fact. we I, I talk about this with the homies all the time. We are just nice people. We are forgiving. We're caring. We're compassionate. That's just who we are. Black. You know what I mean? Um. Cat Williams said it perfect. He was like, um, he said, white people are worried now. <laughs> and he Very. said they worried because they figured something out. He was like, they're figured out like we're the better people. But and he said they figured it out because we haven't retaliated from slavery. We took the high road. We shit, we friends with some of y'all motherfuckers. Oh God. And I'm, and I'm, I'm so he much said, of, if that don't tell a motherfucker you better than them, I don't know what will. Bro, I mean, you know, and just like history say, 6,000 years ago, y'all ain't exist. Yeah. 
nobody seen a white person 6,000 years ago. So it's like, where the fuck y'all come from? You know what I'm saying? And then y'all come over here to take some shit over. Y'all niggas was genetically modified, bro. We created them too. A part Black. of it is us. It's it's the duality. You know, it's when you put a bunch of love and good in the world, like hate is festering somewhere. Man, I tell everybody like when when you look at the earth and how we was made and what's inside of us and what we made out of, you look at the earth. I try to even teach this to my kids, like what color is the soil? It's brown. Like so like our skin color and our melanin, the melanin is in the earth. The way that a plant grows, what feeds a plant, the same shit. That's why they tell us to eat more veg veggies and fruits. And water is H3O inside of the fruit instead of H2O inside of our actual water. Or drink alkaline water or use copper cups when you drink water because copper cups makes any kind of water alkaline. Okay. An alkaline diet can keep you from getting cancer and it can treat you like if you fast, we eat too much a day. Yes. Somebody eating breakfast, lunch and dinner is bad because you're not giving your body time to break down food. So you're supposed to eat when you're hungry, not when you you just eat in the eat. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Stress there, eating. There's a book. Bored, there's a book that teach you that it was a. a the colonizers called us animals because we would eat when we was hungry, like once a day and maybe like a little small portion of something afterwards. Mm -hmm. And they came up with the breakfast, lunch, and dinner shit because they felt like that was the way to go. But it it ain't because your body's not breaking down its food, so it's turning into illness. It's turning into mucus, what leads to your diseases and shit like yeah. that. So when people realize, yo, if I eat once a day, that shit break down and I use the bathroom in a couple hours. I'm getting rid of that shit. And then I only drink tea and water. I don't even really drink pop. And if I, I mean, I might drink a little brew or a little cooler every now and then, but I don't drink a lot of the shit. I barely ever drink pop. Yeah, same. I used you know to as a kid, I had to cut that out. Flat, you know what I'm saying? Snacks and all that shit. I used to be heavy on sugar and all that type of Man, shit. I was just stressy, but but too, I'm a I'm a mad scientist. So when I'm mm -hmm. in the lab long hours, I just be snacking. I don't want to eat too much because I don't want to slow down. And oh, I don't want to get the itis. <laughs> yeah, real so shit. Snacking. <laughs> real, real talk, man. So I had to start about. working on that. And and I think I just changed what the snacks were, you know, which you know, brother, I key and I listen to 19 keys and a bunch of guys, but they've been getting me hit to um, this past couple years. I've been juicing a lot more. I haven't even been drinking as much water. You yeah, know what I'm saying? And I typically only drink spring water when I do, but I haven't really been, I haven't mm. been needing to. I've been so hydrated from the coconut and the melons and the, I eat a For lot sure. of oranges, a lot of apples. So yeah, that's, that's been changing my whole perspective. You know what I mean? Real talk. It's like you mentioned earlier about us being, you know, 80s babies before technology and shit, we view life different because even now, bro, communication with people is different because, yeah. bro, I done talked to a woman older than me and the woman was scared to meet me at like a park or some type of shit to get her first gist of what kind of person I am and shit like that. And I'm thinking to myself, like, back in the days, that's the main place you went to meet somebody. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because it's people walking around, you feel more comfortable because other people, like, we not in a secluded area where you got to feel uncomfortable. But now, you know, with the kidnapping and people doing this yeah. sex trafficking and all that shit, it didn't make everybody weird. Like, ah, I'm kind of worried about meeting you and shit and make sure we meet in a good place. So I swear to God, everybody I meet, Especially when it's a female, I'd be like, "Where do you feel comfortable?" Yes. Not even me. Like I, it ain't even about me. Cause me, I don't give a fuck. I ain't scared of nothing. I comfortable be, everywhere. I swear to God, bro. <laughs> I, I I drove for Amazon, bro, and I used to deliver in the dark, and I can't even explain to you the 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 focus that I have in the dark, and I start hearing noises. Thanks. I don't get scared. I get focused. It's like my awareness yeah. beyond 10,000. Like, I'd be yeah. like, I don't get, my heart don't be pounding. I kind of be looking like, okay, if something pop out, what I'm going to do? Da, da, da. Like, yeah. I already be having shit in my head. Like, 
how I'm gonna react to this shit. You feel me? Yeah. You alert, and that's you. We learn that through life. You know, yeah, what I mean? but those is, that's the beauty of even when we're healing and we're releasing out parts of us. You know, that's why I tell people even about like our parents' generation. Like some things they said were were good was good information that we got from them. We can't just throw away everything. You feel me? Like, and that's another part too. We we got away from those things. You know, we had we used to have to catch our own food, prepare our own food, and that forced you to use the whole animal. Nowadays, you can just use the the tail or the, the tongue or the, you know whatever part you want and throw away the rest, and it's not getting used. So that. Is now counteracting the earth, like because mm-hmm. it has to be a balance. You know what I mean? People want good in the world. You got to put good in the world. Oh, it's God. not just there waiting for you. But the more good you put, the more of a target you are. You did. Oh, how, how was that? How was that for you? Because that, because oh, that target having a target on your back is crazy. You know, for the people that's been in the hood, like we got a lot of people that watch my show that's crossed over. You know, they they did what they did in they in they day, but now they family guys. They <laughs> they out the way with it. You know, so. People need to understand, you know, you can be of an area and still not carry those essence. I've been around a lot of people who people think is tough and they're really nice guys. And yeah. then the quiet guys is really the tough guys. You know what I mean? So oh, dang. God, them them the scariest motherfuckers right yeah. there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you don't know what that, 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 hey, that's, that's what they say. A quiet that, mouth that, is a loud mind. That's where the God boy. The motherfuckers talk too damn much, be the ones getting folded. Straight up, yeah. Straight up. So how was that for you? How, how what's been your whole experience? You know, coming up, how you came up, first getting into music. You know, living where you've lived to where you are today. Man, so uh, I grew up on Oak and Eighteenth. Basically, my mama was um my childhood home was on Madison, right there in the Old Town East area. Okay. Uh, close to like East Broad and Eighteenth, close to downtown. Um. My neighborhood was very dramatic, traumatizing. It was a lot of shit going on. Uh, we was the smallest. Well, let me backtrack a little bit. When I was six, that's when I started playing the piano. You feel me? Okay. Going into my older years, probably around my age of 10, 11, 12, around that area is when my mama and my pop split. And then that definitely a change of mentality you know what i'm saying it's things yes. that you find out things that you figure out about your your situation and they can change your mindset so that a broken home it always deter a young man to do i mean sometimes you feel me but in my situation i lived in the crip neighborhood um so when that happened and i no longer had that structure discipline presence then you start actually going out, you know, you go from playing basketball, football, chilling with the homies, and then shit start getting intriguing to you like, oh, let's start taking some shit because we ain't got a lot. My mama working a lot now because now you got a single house home. Now she got to work all day long. She ain't coming home till nighttime to pay the bills. So you come home from school, you got homework, but T.I. got a song called Never Forgave Myself where he said, Mama, look, we got our own work. Because instead of sitting around waiting for your mama to buy you shit, then you start thinking, like, I got to just get it on my own. You feel me? Mm-hmm. So as a teenager, shout out to my cousin Kia. You know, we was out here doing shit. I was selling drugs. She was doing what she do. She was dealing with dope boys. And we was bringing the chicken to the table. And we was, like, some of the youngest motherfuckers in the family. You feel me? Okay. I was wild magnolia at this point. So when okay. I hit like 16, 17, uh, I'm full-fledged in in the thought process. I'm gangbanging for real. Were you making music at that point? Um, Yeah, that was probably around the time I started. Was around. Okay. I wrote my first rap. Uh, I, I was in a church choir. That's where I started singing at. Around okay. 12. Man, most of us. Man, I make a joke about that, but dead ass. We dead both ass. came for the church choir. Man, church choir, and then <laughs> something about church. Like, I seen a whole bunch of shit that people think I'm crazy for saying, but then I got resources that are back up my stories. You know what I'm saying? Like, right so I lived a different kind of childhood where I done seen ghosts, I done seen a, a crazy ass broad teleport from upstairs to downstairs, blew our fucking minds. I seen 
pretty much what the fuck we would consider an alien in person. You feel me? Um, so, like, the shit that I believe in, people will be like, man, this motherfucker weird, bro. But it's like, I really seen this shit at 12 at my church, and my mama was married to the pastor. She'd tell you the story. We watched the uh, uh, exorcism, basically, in the church. You know what I'm saying? The woman called, called a devil. Like, she started talking like that, foaming out the mouth, tripping. And they had to, like, exercise a demon out of her in church. We got the fuck up out of there, but, yeah, you know, it was some wild shit to see in church. You know what I'm saying? So that's 12 years old. So and then all the, the alien shit happened before that. So it's like my whole childhood, I literally, people think I'm tripping. Maybe I'm the only one in my household that's seen this shit. But one morning, uh, I seen like a bright ass light outside of my door. Now, mind you, it's nighttime, like two, three in the morning. I still remember this shit because it was blew my mind. Yeah, I seen a big bright ass light, and I'm like, "What the fuck is that, dog?" So I look out the window. It's so bright, you don't even know what the fuck it is. You feel me? So my mama's grass was perfectly green. It's summertime. By the time I get outside to see what the fuck crack. It's a circle of dead grass on the side of my mama crib, like a crop circle, how it look. You know, that little fucking... So I'm thinking to myself, like, motherfucker, did a goddamn UFO just land in my motherfucking yard? Like, dead ass? Right. Like, because what How? What else could have caused the grass to be dead in a split, in a day, right. in a complete circle, in a, in a crispy-ass perfect circle? You know what I'm saying? So... That shit blew my mind. And then one of my oldest brothers, well, actually my oldest brother, he was dating some broad, and uh, she pulled up to the crib on some crazy shit, like, where are you at? And he lied to her, told, he, told her he wasn't home. Bro, this chick is out in the car outside. We on the third floor of my mama's crib. This chick started naming where everybody was sitting at and what they was doing on the third floor. But after she did that, one of my cousins was like, yo, you need to go holler at that broad because, yeah. uh, you know, whatever you got going on with her, you're going to have to go deal with yeah. that because that is crazy. Yeah. So, um, but that's like childhood shit. You feel me? So then, you know, getting into the gangbanging shit. So, uh, let me say, high school days. Mm -hmm. uh, in my school, I went to Centennial you High School. What year you come out of high school? Uh, 02, I went to John Burroughs okay. out west in elementary. Then I went to um, some ghetto ass shit out west. And then I went to Mifflin Middle School after that. And then yeah. I went to Centennial High School all four years of my high school days. But okay. I was the only Crip nigga from Oak Street in there. It was more Windsor Terrace, Short North people in there. Yeah. Um, then. High school was kind of like that. I'm different. I was kind of, I was goofy and I got along with everybody. Everybody fucked with me, but, and I was rapping like a motherfucker, like freestyle battles, people beating on the table. I'm snapping on shit. Yeah. So, um, I got known for rapping in high school, like, and I was official with the shit. And then I was talking to Nipsey on MySpace at the time in my okay. computer class every day. You know, MySpace used to pop off. You put your music Go on there crazy. and shit. Yeah, so me and Nick used to have conversations about his his moves, and he told me a whole bunch of shit. He gave me game at this age, and he was like, yo, our life stories is almost similar. When we start gangbanging, him building the studio for his homies to come rap in the crib, that was me. I ghetto rigged the studio and everything. Uh, me and one of my homies back in the day, uh, God then forgave me for it, but... We uh robbed the church and, uh -huh. and not like with people in it, but everybody was gone. But we got broken that motherfucker. We I took cassette tapes, microphones, shit to where I can make music. You feel me? Right, and then right. on the way out, we hit the pantry and got some Ben and Jerry's ice cream and shit. Yeah, we took some food, <laughs> but we went hungry. Like I and then I wanted to rap, and my mama wasn't finna buy me all that shit. And then it was. She bought me a couple things. She got me like a keyboard, but it was just certain pieces I was missing to make music. And I was like, fuck that. We won't. I, don't I know where they at. You feel me? <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, I don't know if you're familiar with the Red Cross on Broad Street. Yeah. But uh, they used to have trucks on the side of my crib. Now, you remember them chirp next tails that came out? They used to have them big, fat ass gray phones with the long antenna, the car phone with the big ass cord on it. 
Yeah. And then the yellow next tails had first came out, them fat them, ones. The brick phones, the ones yeah, that did the brick the joints, yeah. yeah, so niggas got the breaking in them vans, taking them shits, and they was paid for by the Red Cross, so they was burnouts. So oh. we was doing shit like that as kids, you feel me? So that's what led to me actually going from my my teenage group of friends to start hanging around with grown ass men. So my neighborhood was different. When I was coming up, I had probably 10 friends around my age, but then when we start hanging around the older homies, these is grown ass men for real at the time. Mm -hmm. So we learning how to gangbang and do shit on a grown man level when everybody else was like kitty gangbanging and yeah. shit. I'm out here getting told, yo, you got your pants leg up on the wrong side. You got the rag in the wrong pocket. Cause we used to bang to the right back in the days thinking we were super cripping. But the OGs was like, nah, see, because my homies was a couple of my homies from San Diego. So they was like, nah, that ain't how you do it. We from the West Coast, and this is the original way. So, you know, they got to teaching you how to do shit right. You feel me? Mm -hmm. I ain't going to never forget when I graduated, my homies was proud of me. And since I went to Centennial, I had a red uh, cap and gown. And I was so proud of myself for making it through high school. I went around to the hood. And I swear to God, I was over there for like 30 minutes. And it was like, man, we proud of you, my nigga. But you got on all that red, man. Even though it's a cap and gown, bro. You gonna have to... Uh... <laughs> bro, it was some wild Time's shit, up. man. So I was just like, yo. like, But gangbanging was... I try to tell people all the time, bro. In those 90s and early 2000s, gangbanging here was damn near like California, for real. Yeah. Like, you couldn't walk down the street, Livingston Avenue, bro. You can count 200 bloods just going down... From Livingston at 18th to Livingston and Fairwood, and then up to Woodier and every South Side hood, it was just bloods everywhere. You know what I'm saying? So I was like, today, and people was outside. You went to the Short right. North, niggas was outside. You come to my neighborhood, we was outside. Mount Vernon, the terrace, all the people was just outside. You feel me? Today, when them new gangbangers started coming around, I said, bro, y'all all to just did that shit because with all this gentrification, Y'all ain't dealing with what the fuck we had to deal with, bro. I went to the Stars program. You remember Fatty Cool? Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, Fatty Cool came out of the Stars program with me. Oh, okay. Yeah, so we all was in the same program right across from Mean Mug Studio. Okay. You feel me? So going, that's when I start actually making my first records records, like where my shit sounded more crispy. You feel me? Yeah. So everybody kept comparing me to Chingy because I sound like him, but I rap way better than that nigga. <laughs> so, but they was like, you sound like Chingy, bro. Like, and I was like, yeah, whatever. Bro. I'm doper than that nigga for real. Yeah. But, but we was all talented. It was motherfuckers in there that could do everything. You know what I'm saying? So, um, got out of high school, and I just kept it moving. I just kept doing music after that, and uh, I released a project. Uh, making the band was on TV at the time. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Blue BT with Chopper and all them. Chopper released a mixtape, and I released my first mixtape called Thunder's Garden, and that shit did crazy numbers. Like I got popular off of Thunder's Garden. I had a I had a um, song called Bitch I'm a Monster that still slapped to this day. All the pictures you probably see me posting with everybody standing in the uh, on the stage with me dancing. That yeah. was not part of the program. Like, mm -hmm. I started doing a song, and people would just get that energy. And, like, people would tell you, bro, like, they just start flooding the stage. Every time I performed that song, it went up. So I was like, oh, yeah, I got a hit, dog. So <laughs> that shit was going crazy for, like, five years. Big Bro uh, GT had a song called Wacky Wood with Slapping. Curdy Mac did a song with Bow Wow called What's Up, Bro. That was a hit in the city. Ty Wills had just came from Toledo, had crazy hits. And I, yeah, it was like people was dropping Young Wise, things from Brittany Hills. He want, he's, with all due respect to the artist, I feel like he's the only artist that matches my creativity. Okay. Because like he's an all around rapper. He can sing, rap, he got songs about everything you could think of. Yeah, substance. Yeah, his videos is way colder than mine. So he could hella creative with that. And um I just back in the day, you know, he was a blood dog. So it was kinda like 
he had a cocky attitude, and mm. I was more like, nigga, we gangsters around here. That cocky shit don't go. Because I, I grew up in a place where you acting like a pretty boy and doing all that cocky shit was like, niggas would slap shit out of you or something. Red flags. Yeah, yeah, yeah like people wasn't feeling that in my hood. You feel me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the bitch word, the beat done got you killed. Yeah, like, I, I still don't like that, man. Yeah, I don't. Especially not crazy. a nigga playing with me like that. Don't play with me. Bro, but when you look at these younger generations, they joke around with their friends like that. Yeah, call each Even other. Even the older people don't do it. I'm, I ain't, I'm, I'm, I don't, I can't do it. <laughs> <laughs> my brother, that's not my baby. Yeah, bro. Like, my man, yeah. that's my homie. <laughs> like, bro, I can't. I just can't do it. It's, see, I, it's two people trying to be too different. I yeah, try to, that I could to become say, problematic. I had to save my cousin from that shit because my cousin was one of them people. He was kind of like a trying to get accepted type of nigga. Okay. And uh, I brought him to the hood. Bro, I, I got some story, bro. I brought him, I brought him to the hood, and um, they ain't used to this kind of gangbanging because it's grown-ass men out here. You feel me? Yeah, yeah. So he come over, and he got that shit where he'll slip and say that because you kind of like childish mental. You ain't been out here like that. You feel yeah. me? So when he get to kicking it with my folks, I told him before we got over there, bro, look, they probably going to offer you a beer because they, they going to know you with me. So they going to offer you a beer and all that whoop de whoop but don't let that word slip out your mouth, dog, because I ain't going to be able to save you, bro. Like, yeah. niggas will demolish your ass, bro, and there yeah. ain't going to be shit I can do about it. You know what I'm saying? So I, he started getting a little buzzed, and then he started, like, I just seen it coming. You feel me? So I was like, nah, I won't get you up out of here, dog. <laughs> I already seen it coming, bro. I was Intercepted like, right, that slip? shit. Like, nah. Oh, my God. Uh, he could have got slaughtered, bro. So, <laughs> and then back in the day, um, I went through a phase where I was fighting, like, every motherfucking summer. Like, sometimes it was the same nigga, like, and it was for different reasons. I did the whole chip on the shoulder shit where a motherfucker put it. Somebody put a chip on his shoulder, and they was like, yeah, y'all always going to fight. I dare you to knock it off. Little instigating-ass niggas in my hood, you feel me? Mm -hmm. So they put the chip on his shoulder, and I had that attitude, like, nigga, who y'all trying to think? I ain't no bitch. So I knocked the shit off quick. Woof, fuck this nigga. Let's get to it. <laughs> <laughs> so we in the middle of the street rocking, and I remember I started cold. I started Boofing homie, and he got on the on a uh, he was on the van curled up like in a little ball, and I'm socking his ass. But I had I had a heart, my dog. Like mm -hmm. I couldn't just beat the dog shit out of nigga, and I know I'm winning. I would back up and be like, Nah, I'm gonna give you a fair one, like give you time yeah. to recoup and let we can get back to it. So See, I'm the same. I can't whoop your ass either if you're not fighting back. And, and he would fight fun. back. It ain't fun for me. Yeah, he, he would fight back, you know, and then I hit him with a good one. And then the homies instigate, like, oh, damn, shit. homie hit you. You got a shiner now. Like, you know what I'm saying? They would make it all bad, so he would keep wanting to fight. And I was like, I'll, I remember I backed up from Oakland Monroe all the way, like, two blocks down, trying not to fight this man. But I was yeah. fucking him up the whole fight. Yeah. But I'm like, just leave me alone, dog. Cause. And that's how I like being like that in the beginning. Because if you keep pushing me, I ain't going to feel... I'm going to sleep good tonight. No, oh, I'm God. Because I, I, I try to avoid this. Oh, God. His brother his brother doing hella time right now. And he was younger. But uh, his brother... I don't know what the fuck we got into arguing about. But he was a younger dude. Okay. And um, I don't know what the fuck he was thinking. But I said something to him. And he socked me. And I hit him. I my reaction hit him back so fast. I split his whole. I split his whole shit open. And um, I didn't even mean to though, for real. It was just like a reaction, like pop, pop, like you know what I'm saying. So he went to go tell his brother, and I don't know what happened, but on this particular day, his brother, I fought like three, four times, but his brother didn't come outside that day. He was like, "Well, you shouldn't have said whatever she said." He had enough. So, yeah, he had enough. Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> I'm done with this nigga. Oh God, <laughs> bro! Listen to this shit though. Then my oldest brother get into it with their stepdaddy. Damn. His stepdaddy and the nigga's dad and his stepdad's brother. His brother had just got out from doing 25, so I'm talking about swole diesel motherfucker, yeah, right? Yeah. Bro, 
Shout out to my cousin Kia again because she was there. We pull up. We get out the whip. They get the my brother, oldest brother, and them get the arguing. Bro, I'm a little nigga. I'm skinny and all, bro. I walked outside, got in the middle, and I'm just like, bro, y'all ain't about to do my brother. Like, you know what I mean? So however this shit going to go down, we going to have to work. Yeah. So his stepdaddy was like, come out here and fight him again. For some reason, he ain't want to fuck with me no more. So I was just like, all right, well, that's that. So now I'm just like, okay, so this nigga just got out of 25. I'm thinking, this the main nigga we got to worry about. So I'm going to stop yeah. this nigga first. I'm going to try to get him up out of here. That's that. Because he's big. Yeah, I'm first. I know if he catch me with a good one, I'm going to sleep. Yeah. So I'm like, nah. I'm gonna Them big niggas trying to put you in a headlock, too. Yeah, yeah, that. yeah. <laughs> so I said, so my thought process <laughs> in my hood, we had little dudes that would demolish you, bro. Like, like, bro, I, man, listen. <laughs> bro, I can go on and on about these hood stories. <laughs> but all I'm going to say is that my my awareness from uh -huh. being in the hood, I dealt with situations where you in a one-way in, one-way out type of building to where you ain't have no choice but to get out. Yeah. Uh, I had situations to where I had to back out and be kind of the cur nigga because I was the nigga with the studio equipment. So there was a certain bar fight where I was kind of salty at my homies because they started a whole bar fight and it went down. And I had all the studio equipment in there. So I'm like, damn, nigga. Mm -hmm. I'm the nigga got to wrap all this shit up and make sure I get it out because it's my shit. Quickly, so ain't nobody too. care, nigga. We just doing ghetto shit. But yeah. <laughs> I'm like, bruh, my cousin hit a motherfucking bouncer so hard. He looked at him and asked him, bruh. He hit the motherfucker so hard, the nigga looked up and asked him, like, please don't hit me again. And I ain't never seen no big-ass bouncer do this before. <laughs> and my cousin was probably 5'9", five, 5'10", five, but he was an animal. Yeah. You feel me? Bruh, talking about niggas was hitting shit. Like, shit was bad. But that then, was the time when you had to fight, too. You had to fight. But see, I had ties with... We was cool with some bloods. You know what I'm saying? My first video... Yeah, I don't know if you've seen it, but that Chopper's video, I got mad blue rags on and shit. I shot that video halfway in my hood, and then I shot the other half on Oak and Wilson. Y'all was y'all was in the actual neighborhood? We, I'm from the Oak bunch Street, of people so. outside? Yeah, yeah. Yep. I seen that one. I yeah, seen that was so hard. Like, that video, when I went to Oak and Wilson, think about this, bro. This a time where none of my, my homies was doing so much dirt. They didn't like to be on cameras. They didn't want to yes, be seen. Yes. And that was new for that time still. You feel me? Cameras and all that. That was new. Today, everybody clout said they want to be showing guns and shit. My niggas right, didn't want right. to be seen at all. So didn't nobody know from looking at the video, but my homies was lined up on the street just making sure ain't nobody tried nothing with me. So you feel me? So I'm in the middle of Oak and Wilson with the homies, like, because my homie Lil Rock was rocking with them. He wasn't the blood, but he was hanging with, he had them as his people. And then I knew some of them because we played basketball, football together, or they went to East High School with some of my homies from the hood. Mm -hmm. So we had, like, mutual respect for each other, but it was just a small group of us. First video, success, it went great. We tried to shoot another one over there, and it was a different time. Mm -hmm. Shit, we got the phone call, and the homie was like, bro, y'all going to have to get up out of there because word is they finna pull up and try to air y'all out, like, so y'all better, y'all gonna have to slide. Like, it was just a different vibe, and it wasn't the yeah, same yeah. people. So we got up out of that baby like right on time. Man, neighborhoods change over quick too. People don't realize that somebody well, go to jail, somebody die, it's somebody new. Man, if we would have shot that video, we was gonna be dead as hell. <laughs> I wouldn't be here today, bro. But it's so much stuff happened in the hood where I could have just been gone. Yeah. At, at that Stars Program place, mm -hmm. that was the first time I got robbed at gunpoint. Damn. Uh, uh, somebody set the studio up pretty much. They cut the the wires. They cut the phone cords. They did this shit all the way professional. Came That's through, uh, you know, with the rifle. I went through the whole bunch of shit. I was saving lives and shit. Uh, uh, talking shit. Bro, I had a I had a spray painted t-shirt on. It had the hood on it. So, and I'm in the blood neighborhood. I'm a Livingston and Champion or some shit. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, so I'm catching hell up in there, but I'm talking shit. You know what I'm saying? But then my daughter was only two at the time. So uh, there was a point in time I was finna die because 
there was a point in time in that robbery. I don't know if you all, like, you know, it's kind of like a, you go up a fire escape. So the studio was set up like an apartment. You feel me? Okay. Okay. So the homie had everybody after he came in with the rifle and told everybody to get in the bathroom, lay down, do what he do. I'm talking crazy and shit at first. Then he hit me with some shit like, turn on that bathtub, I'm finna drown you niggas. And when he said that shit, my shit kicked in like, nigga, you might as well shoot me then, because I ain't no way I'm fucked. I'm sticking yeah, my I ain't head. Sure yeah, who do you think this nigga, what the fuck? But that ain't happened. So then he cocked the, the rifle back, bullet fell out that motherfucker. He had like a twenty two rifle, not no pistol. This motherfucker came in here with a whole deer rifle. <laughs> Oh God! I'm like, who are you trying to kill with this motherfucker? So anyway, <laughs> bro, he cocked that bitch back, and the bullet hit the ground. And that's kind of when I had I start thinking about my daughter. Like, damn, I need to shut the fuck up for this nigga. Yeah, actually. yeah. And then this nigga crying, bro. The dude that was crying and went through the worst. He was from Lincoln Park. Still to this day, it psychologically fucked him up going through that like to this day he like yeah. i don't know what happened to him but he got like shell shocked from that shit yeah ptsd yeah. man yeah he did for real and, and like, i think it's a fine line between that awareness you was talking about or mm -hmm. having ptsd from being in that same environment real shit man he he fucked up like he can't keep a job he on medication and it's sad to see you know what i'm saying i yeah. seen him here and bro it's so crazy that every time he see me he bring up that story and that shit was in 2007 some type of shit okay and then uh you know i like talking about shit like this bro because what how you like how what made me how i am today yeah. uh my cousin hit me up one day which is you know he was like my closest cousin uh he hit me up to borrow my strap because mm -hmm. they was about to go to some bar on fifth avenue it was called the limelight or some shit <laughs> so uh and i used to go to fucking cns a lot Okay. So um the line light he took my pistol, they was doing what they do. Like a week later, some shit, he was going through something. Uh the homie Meech was there and uh I don't know exactly what transpired in the whole ordeal, but he had my strap and basically what ended up happening is he ended up killing himself with the gun I had that I gave him. Damn. Damn. So Fuck psychologically, them. even though I know I didn't have nothing to do with it, it still fucked me up knowing that yeah. that happened like that. So I'm thinking like, fuck, bro, like, I ain't give you the strap for that. You feel me? Yeah. So I was mad at the nigga, but I was sad at the, like, I was sad as fuck. You know what I'm saying? Went to the hospital. They had his head wrapped. The shit was swollen up. And, you know, he ain't make it out of that shit. So. Damn. My condolences, man. Man, I appreciate you, brother. But for... Bro, I'm 38, and I'm okay. literally tell you, just two years ago, I just got over the shit. Wow. I couldn't go see his kids for a long time because they looked just like the nigga. Like, it was yeah. hard for me to even talk to him. His baby mom used to be like, come kick it with the kids. And I just told her straight up, like, yo, it's difficult as fuck for me to even look at his kids, bro. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So that, I just got over the Character and honor. It's a lot of what I hear from you. You know, that's that's game that because I feel like our generation didn't have cre uh, hella OGs no, in our yeah, families yeah, and fact. in our household. Like you were saying, we was getting that from the streets and sports. You know what I mean? So I feel like <clears throat> that's the honor code. You know, I feel the same way. Like I would hate to have to come pick up any of my homies and take them out to the crib. And then everybody else making it home but them. And I got to go tell their family they ain't coming back. You know what I mean? I would, I, it would be, it's tough to get over shit like that. It's hard not to blame yourself. Man. And then, and then it's like shit, like my first felonies that I caught, I was with a homie that I grew up with since 12 years old. You feel me? And the way this shit happened, it made me kind of bitter towards the nigga because of how it happened. And when I tell you, I don't know what it was, because this is my first time going to jail, and I had two guns. One was dirty, one was actually in my name, and then it was dope in the whip. How that whole situation happened, you know, I ain't going to go into stupid details, but the SWAT hit, like, they pulled up on us quick with the helicopter. Cops came out of nowhere, and uh, they pulled the strap out on me. I'm high and drunk, too. So when the cop pulled the strap out, and he, like, 
he looked dead at me through the windshield and was like, don't move or I'm going to blow your fucking head off. But he was one of them redneck cops. So his whole face mm -hmm. was like red. Now, mind you, I'm high as fuck. So me looking at him, I want to laugh, but I'm thinking like he going to shoot shit out of me. Yeah, so it was like I was halfway moving. nervous and halfway wanted to laugh. So I was like, yeah. I can't make one false move. He going to shoot me. Yeah. So, but I wanted to laugh. Because you should have seen his face, dog. It was some foul. It nigga looked like a strawberry. But, <laughs> but, so I went through the motions. You feel me? And it was what it was. Got out. A whole bunch of shit cracked off, man. And then um, we got cool after that. But, like, you can never fuck with a nigga the same after that. And, yeah. then, he, and then eventually something happened. He ended up getting killed or whatever. Uh, a whole bunch of my homies just start falling over the years. So, like, today, most of us gone or in jail. Some of us just now got to come home after doing 18, 20 years. You feel me? Like, so now I'm one of the very few that woke up and distanced myself from everybody. Like, I just got out the way completely. Like, some shit I went through with some folk, I felt like never should have happened. Some people's true colors showed, and that's the reason why I don't rock with them now. We cool. I'll say what's up to you and shake your hand if I see you, but I could never kick it around you because I ain't comfortable with you. You give me like a, a vibe that I don't like to have. You feel me? And, uh -huh. and I mean, I don't, at this point, motherfuckers ain't apologized or made amends. So there ain't nothing that you can do now because you don't let too much time go past without making it yeah. right. So now I'm just like, nah, nigga, because deep inside you really feel a certain type of way. So yeah, sometimes that's people's downfall. They let you see life without them. That's the worst thing you can do. Man, and I just ain't got it to do, bro. So like today, even the niggas that I call my friends, I barely see. Cause I ain't that comfortable hanging around people for too long. It's very selected few people that I can do that with and feel okay. Mm -hmm. It's like I rather hang around family members and shit now. And and I know some people spiritual and they got the juice, but I done seen people's characteristics change when they drink. See, mine's never did. I used to get sloppy drunk and be a happy nigga. Like I used to be like, Dang. if I got mad. It was because somebody was disrespecting me, and I felt right. like, you know, because I done turned the fuck up. Bro, I got a homie doing 18 right now. He about to come home, man. Shout out to King Hug, man. But he crazy motherfucker to me. You know what I'm saying? He was crazy to a lot of people. A lot of people ain't gonna fuck with homie, like, off the chain. But I remember being at a bootleg bar one day, uh -huh. and I just snapped. I don't, I don't know exactly what all happened, but something made me snap. And I picked up a bitch, not a nine mom, my bad. Let me change that word, a chick. Because she was just talking crazy, you feel me? And there was dudes in there, too. So I was kind of, like, provoking, like, I wish y'all would. So right. she said something wild, and she was twerking on me or something. And said something was super crazy. And I remember picking her up from the front of her jeans in the air, and I dropped her. <laughs> and then I just start talking crazy, like saying shit from my hood and woo woo woo. So anyway, <laughs> so anyway, after all that shit ended, I remember the homie hit me up like, "Yo, nigga, you crazy in the motherfucker, bro." And I was looking at him like, "You got your motherfucking nerve, right?" <laughs> <laughs> like, nigga, that wasn't nothing. Pot calling the kettle black. Like, you're real talk, like nigga, get real. <laughs> Like, you know what I'm saying? He one of them niggas. I didn't even like riding with him because he was spontaneous as fuck. You bro. never know where it's going to go, man. You never know where it's going to go, bro. Trip to McDonald's can turn to you doing forever. It's dude. like playing Grand Theft Auto. Oh, my like, God. Like, what's dog. coming next? <laughs> I love my dog to death, man. Could be I a robber. You death, never man. Know. <laughs> man, so, I mean, it's just that. But, see, I had a heart the whole time. You feel me? Like, because yeah. I worked for the state. I had a job at 18. Uh, I was I worked for like a youth program trying to help kids and shit. So, and literally when she was when we was talking about youth and shit, I literally just messaged one of the little homies I was trying to take care of when he was 12 and I knew that he was going through it. And I knew he was going to end up going to jail. You know what I'm saying? And he did eventually like when he got older. 
And then today, he going back down that same kind of path. And I said something to him literally yesterday. And uh, he he ain't say nothing back or respond. So it's like some people just be in that dark place and you can't get them out of it. You yeah. feel me? Yeah, best thing you can do is just show the love and give them that space and let them come around. Like, because people got to want to heal. They got to want to grow. That's facts. That's facts. That's facts. Yeah. So then relationship-wise, that was another thing. I went through a whole bunch of relationship shit. My second relationship was crazy. My first one was crazy to the motherfucker. Bro, I try to... Back in my... Back in them days, bro, I got into it with somebody, you know, some little, you know, female uh, uh, cheating shit type shit cracked off. Yeah. I try, I was been whacking motherfucker. Like I was, I was so angry about how the situation happened. You ever like ran? I don't mean. Well, maybe I shouldn't even talk. But look, <laughs> so, <laughs> so look. Uh, a situation occurred where yeah. um, I ended up crossing paths with somebody that who I was with cheated on me with. Okay. And then I crossed paths with the homie. And, bruh, when we was younger, I used to walk up on the chick and he would walk away and let me say, because she used to walk through my neighborhood. Okay. And I used to jump off the fire escape, like, we'd be hollering at her. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. He used to stay, keep walking. So mm-hmm. when he actually chose to say something crazy to me this day, it blew my mind because I'm like, nigga, you don't remember I'm the same motherfucker you used to, you used to be scared of for real. Right. Don't don't forget, bro. I'm the one with the juice for real. I'm worse now. Well, I'm, yeah, point? like come on, don't do that. <laughs> so so we in the spot, we got a check cashing place or something, and he and he say something crazy, and. I immediately, he told me to meet him outside or something. And, and uh, that was like the wrong shit to say to me at this point in my life. Yeah, yeah. Um, So I went outside. I had the motherfucking Honda look like baby boys. And I hit the <laughs> trunk button before I even got out the door. I hit the trunk button on the way out the door. Boom, meet you outside. And I'm walking outside first. That was stupid. You should have waited till you was out first to say some stupid shit like that. Right. By the trunk. And in the situation, I basically had told who I was with, like, she was trying to stop it. Like, no, no, no. And I was like, oh, good one for you, this wouldn't be happening. Exactly. So I was like, bro, if you ain't out my face by the time this nigga come out the door, I'm going to shoot him through your face. <laughs> like, I was that, I, I don't know. Something was wrong with me at the time. Hey, we was young, man. Yeah, yeah. We was so, young, we ain't know no better. Bro, I tried to get this. I was so thirsty to get this food. I, I did, bro. I was hanging on a fence. Like, like I tried to make him think I left. And then I went in between some houses. And it was like them little privacy fences that was like in between the houses where you couldn't yeah. go through the houses. Because I was trying to just hide and do what I do. Man, I jumped up on a fence and I had one arm holding the fence. Like, <laughs> under my armpit. And I had the pistol in my hand just waiting on him to come out the door. Bro, I was on some weird shit, bro. You know what I'm saying? And then I made her show me where he lived at. And I was waiting out there. He never showed up. So then I just started spazzing on her the whole time he was in the car. Like, motherfucker, you know what I'm saying? Then the police came around the corner. And I was thinking to myself, like, yeah, you must have called the police. Right. Oh. But I don't know. Like, from what I was i hated doing stuff as a group because yeah. i always felt like that was what's going to get me sent to jail is being with somebody so i was i will always do dirt by myself Thanks. um but just coming from that to now i feel like the growth of that staying alive you feel me i got in a car accident fell asleep behind the wheel shit rolled like 12 13 times I had my baby mom and my brother in the whip. Not we wasn't supposed to survive that shit at all. Uh, we got into a wreck uh, in the middle of the freeway another time, and my baby mom and dude girlfriend fell out the whip in the middle of the freeway at that time. Mm-hmm. My head went through the windshield, and I don't know how I was the first nigga out the car, but I saved them and got them out the middle of the freeway before they got ran the fuck over. Um, so I went through that shit. Um. So just today, bro, I just done been through so much shit that 
it was difficult to find peace within. You know what I'm saying? My jail spouts from the felonies to the misdemeanors to going through the domestic situations with the kids' moms and shit. Uh, and then I think after my cousin did that shit, I told you about that for like the next couple of years after he did that, I had got appointed to anger management class by the court okay. system and I had to pay for it. So I'm like, how the fuck is that? That's oh, wild. Wow. Yeah. So I went through that situation, got up out of there and I was just angry now. Cause it's like, I can't find a job. I got these felonies. I can't get a crib. Yeah, you know I'm saying it was just fucking with me. You know what I'm saying? And then um coming out of that to find peace. I I just found my peace after my marriage. My marriage didn't work out. I was with her for like ten years. I started healing a couple months before I left her. And oh, then gosh. I wrote the book that I sent you, the train and conceal hard emotions. Yeah, yeah. I had started writing that book in the midst of that relationship ended. Um, I used to read books from an author named R.A. Sin, if you familiar. I've heard of. Yeah, R.A. Sin is like top quality nigga, man. So like his book I read, She Just Wants to Forget was the name of it. Okay. But it was talking in like a female sense, but it could go either way. Okay. So it was kind of teaching you how to detach and how to just let shit go that don't want you to be there no more. Like you can tell somebody mentally checked out to let it go. Instead yeah. of like trying to like, no, oh, that's my wife, nigga. I'll kill you over my wife. Nigga. Yeah, you so trying to somebody is happy, the dead body. Yeah, you gotta let somebody go where they happy at. You can't and that's where emotional intelligence, I feel like that's where my emotional intelligence got way high. Cause okay. I had learned to allow people to go towards whatever make them happy and realize you can't control another person. So that helped me. Then I wrote that book to help heal people and tell them about and that book is basically saying everything I just told you in this whole entire interview. Like I, I almost got everything in that book word for word. So at the end, finding your peace is not allowing your past situations to make you who you is today. Cause I'm not going to tell you that all of that shit. I just now talked to you about made me who I am today. Because at the end of the day, it's still your option and your choice what you going to become. Right. So, like, I can go through the most traumatizing shit, but there come a point in your life where you got to say, fuck that, I'm going to change this and I'm going to be this way. And then you got to cut the strings. I tell people, if you operate your life off of what your past traumas is, you like a puppet. Your past mm -hmm. traumas is the strings. So they just making you, and so I don't accept that when people say, well, I've been through this and this is why I act like this. Motherfucker, you can change how you is at any moment. Yes. You can be whatever you want to be. If your whole family was crackhead, you can be the one motherfucker don't turn into a crackhead if you choose not to be. Right. You feel me? So that's where I'm at with the smoke. So now the place of peace that I'm in now, mm -hmm. I just, now this is recent. I was homeless after my marriage ended because mm -hmm. I left the crib. But it's more a man that know itself. You know that you can go from ground zero and build yourself back up to something. So it was leave the crib because I don't want my kids to witness me and their mama arguing all the time. And that's more traumatizing and damaging than me trying to keep the household together. Right. Feel me? So I leave homeless, get an apartment. Before I got this apartment that you see me sitting in, I went homeless for about four or five months to stack paper because I'm on child support. One job wasn't cutting it. I'm working off a of half a check every payday. Yes. So that's my bills and rent and ain't no more money. So I had to just go homeless and stack paper to even get enough money to get an apartment. And right. now it's recent. Feel me? Today, I just went through some shit two, three weeks ago where I was dead at ground zero two, three weeks ago. Uh -huh. But when I tell you my God is the dopest nigga, I talk to God like a homie and a lot of people don't like that. A lot of Christian people and shit, they be like, don't 
why you be cussing while you talking about God? Because God is my nigga. If God live inside of you and God exists inside of us, why wouldn't I talk to him like I talk to myself as if I got a twin me sitting here? Exactly. You know what I'm saying? He understands my conversation with him. You don't have to. My life ain't exactly. your life. Feel me? So when I talk to him, it's like, damn, nigga, why you got me going through this shit? And you know what I'm saying I have my breakdowns. You feel me? <laughs> but my breakdown turned into triumph. You feel me? A day after I broke down and cried a little bit, I got two jobs. Shit happened. My car was fucking up on me, and that was my money maker. That stopped my bread. I had to hurry up and find jobs. I applied for like 50 motherfucking places. Ended up getting two of them. So I said, boom, that's two jobs. Then I sold my wit. Bam, that put money in my pocket. Called my bill people that I owe bills in my rent, and I was behind. Yo, can I get an extension? How can we make this work? Boom, they gave me extensions. So I said, damn, with the amount of time y'all gave me to pay my shit, I'm about to have like eight checks that came by then. City taxes hit from my taxes. Bam. So like, I'm up in two weeks of struggling. So it was like, I knew myself to not let myself say, he gonna test your faith to see if you really love that nigga. God always going to test your faith and say, bro, if I put you through the hardest shit, is you still going to worship and praise me and believe that I'm going to make it all right? And that's how I operate. I always feel like God is going to make it work. Uh And if I ever had to be homeless, he going to make sure I'm okay out there if I was living in the woods or in a tent. Uh He going to make me content. Then I get this the last spill about the struggle that I'm going to say. Uh-huh. What opened my eyes and humbled me was I took a cruise for, like, my honeymoon, and we went to Belize, Honduras, and Mexico. Nice. When I went to Belize, it was, like, poverty. Feel me? As soon as you got in the city, it was people hounding you to buy stuff because, you know, this is their everyday life. Just to get out here and try to get the tourists to buy shit, and, you know, this is their hustle. Uh It was better than people out here with cups. And that gave me a different mentality about our homeless people. It's like these people out here are knitting. They ready to braid hair. They making bracelets, earrings. They doing whatever they can to make a dollar. And y'all out here asking for change. And you in America where you got mad opportunity. So I got to see the slave dungeons where they kept slaves shackled at. They showed me the piers where the boats came in and dropped the slaves off at. I seen Queen Elizabeth's old crib. It was just a humbling at the schools out there didn't have no air. It was just open windows. So they was learning in complete hot inside of like a tomb. It was crazy as fuck. Damn. So by the time I got home, I was like, bruv, that ain't the most humbling experience I ever had in my life. I came back to America like I don't give a fuck if I'm homeless and I don't got shit. I just witnessed a hundred times worse shit than I ever could imagine. Uh So now when people complain about me and complain about their lives in America and how hard it is and da da da, I be looking at niggas like, you would never know. Just think about this. You just said that you've been looking at my post for I don't know how long, but just in the past, (laughs) so just in the past year, with the shit, I moved into this apartment I'm in right now in November. Four, five months before that, I was homeless. The last month leading to me getting this apartment, my niece helped me out, let me stay over there. Shout out to her. And then I got my crib. That's a year right there, pretty much. Mm-hmm. You would have never knew I was going through that shit. Not at all. I stayed dressed. I smelled good. I wasn't bummy. You would have never, my spirit was still talking about the yeah. same. You had good vibes, good energy. That's what it's about. Yeah. Because I always feel like God got me some kind of way, shape, or form. Something's going to happen, and it's going. So now I'm busting these two jobs. I hate working for people because every job I work at, I run into like a racist experience. Mm-hmm. I done climbed the ladder in a job to where I'm making hella dough. But see, it's like you get to that threshold and then those white managers, 
the favoritism kick in and where you see people getting jobs that don't deserve it and you didn't and then that make you it drain you from wanting to work for people no more yes or so, if the money they paying you to put up with bullshit yeah or they start nitpicking you to try to make you quit my yeah. cousin just went through this shit today like recently like just this week so now it's just like and i told him that this shit was going to occur about four months ago he tell you i said bro because this nigga done been on billboards for his company and everything they done flew this nigga to a different state cunt city to to build up warehouses and everything with people and he's done it successfully so then y'all still giving him a hard time and acting racist towards him see what i'm saying it's like they're not gonna let you get to a certain point just like in the music industry yeah. you start making enough bread that's when that weird ass contract sell your soul shit come in oh okay well in order for you to keep getting this kind of bread you want to start doing this paint your nails change your hair wear this purse put this dress on you can i'll slap the shit out of somebody this is why i feel like i ain't famous <laughs> because then see in one of them kind of meetings yo no bullshit g i have been told that shit before by a record label mm -hmm. they want to change my hair turn my hair this color to make me more presentable and look younger i'm like motherfucker i'm me bro my yeah. talent should get me where the fuck i need to go Facts. i don't got to be looking like six nine to get attention now i understand the plot twist and why that shit makes you get attention but i'm sorry I'm from that's the wrong Texas. type of attention i don't want that type of attention. i don't want that shit because you gotta team. keep dressing up to get it too that's the kicker you got to just think about how hood young boy that's he the most thuggest little nigga i seen black now you painting your nails black but now he made that video talking about some he don't he regret like the music that he been making and no, you don't. I don't know what the fuck going on with these They can people. stop benefiting from it. That yeah. Be, they love it as long as they benefit. But you hit the nail on the head. Like, if it don't resonate with my soul, it's it's a hard pass. A hard no. Hard pass, bro. <laughs> I could have been signed at 17, bro. Like, 17 years old, I had I could have been signed basically from a branch of Outcast. You know what I'm saying? And the shit that happened with that, you know, that's a long story. But it was just like. I done been through the industry woes and shit and realized my soul ain't for that. Yeah. And you that's what me? the public don't get. More people have been in and out the industry that's then that's still in it. Man, the longer you in that motherfucker. That, they bro, think you're you supposed to be in there money, forever. You can only get crazy rich if you fucking over somebody. A hundred percent. Them contracts, all of them, you fucking over somebody. Oh, How many people that not signed a contract and ain't got paid in 10 years? The game, all of these people talk about how they went 10 years without even making no bread. Yeah. I don't know how they kept their sanity in that TLC. When they got on stage and said, bro, ah, oh, we broke. We ain't even got, they said this shit at an award show. You remember that? Yeah. Hell yeah. We ain't even got paid. Like, bro, and people I thought it was a joke. They bro, thought it was playing. I would have killed everybody. But it's but I get it. It's the psychology between behind. How does that make sense? I see you on BET every day. How do you think every I'm day, you know I mean? bro? That, that shit but that's, blows you out. That's why the industry set it up that way, which is rappers that, are starting that, to talk they about give, now. They gift you the Lambo, but you owe that motherfucking two hundred thousand dollars now. Yeah. Now and you they, and they don't just that do shit. that to us. They did the same shit to Elvis. Like when Elvis was fucking with his management. They Man. had, you know, they was paying for everything. As soon as things got left, they sent him a bill. Like, here's your flight. Here's your studio time. Here's hey, your gas. <laughs> that, that happened to me in Atlanta, dog. That's crazy. That happened to me in Atlanta. I was about to get signed, and then person ain't have nothing to do with my artistry hit me with a packet when we got home because they knew we was I was about to get signed, and they wanted a piece of the pie, and I was only 17. And I was unaware, but I my ghetto my i was still a g so yeah. my gangster discernment was like what the fuck? like my gangster discernment told me something was wrong with it you feel like you're trying to be played yeah i that felt that strong shit in my too soul. you feel like somebody trying to play you like that nah. i left the next day <laughs> I, I asked my mom i told my mama bro give me the fuck yeah i'll need my ticket on the greyhound i'm coming back home Fuck that there's some weird shit going on out here yeah. bro i went to evander's holyfield's house at 12 years old the nigga had 
a lake. Bruh, I'm going to tell you some weird shit. Oh, God. Mm -hmm. The first thought process I had of thinking of, oh, I could probably get rid of somebody doing this and never get caught. Yeah. I went to a Vander Holyfield's crib. His security guard had two buckets of hamburger. And I'm like, what the fuck you got two big ass buckets of hamburger for? Mm -hmm. He was like, watch this. Bro, it was a lake right in the fence of Vander Holyfield crib. Nigga had about 20,000 piranhas in the lake. I didn't know this, though, at the Ooh. time. Bro, he threw the buckets of meat in there. It was these motherfuckers went crazy. They was <laughs> flipping, flopping out the water and shit. I'm like, God damn. Like, I was thinking to myself, like, bro, if a person fell in that motherfucker. It's over. It's over, bro, to the bone gristles. I love nature. It's Man, over. that's the craziest nature I've ever seen. <laughs> hey, pigs do the same thing. Pigs eat through bone. Oh, my God, bro. Starve so them when a I little first bit. seen that, so I, I was heard. thinking to myself, like, damn, how this nigga probably done kill people. Yeah. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? It was weird. Oh, I think that about all rich people. As soon as you hit a millionaire, I'm like, you done killed somebody. Else, man. <laughs> I swear to God. I ain't never you seen that like that. somebody off at 600000 They pushed you over the hump. They pushed you over the hump. He I better get be lucky it's, Mike Tyson ain't go to his crib. Man, listen. After been biting his ear off. I get it, too. And I, and I get how it's all so connected. Like, when I was younger, I still to this day, I love mob culture. And it was it was for the principal. It was for the structure more than it was, you know, the, the violence or the chaos or what people thought it was. Because there was still culture in the hood. It's still culture in gangs. You know, it's culture in the mob. But people don't get close enough to get to see the beauty. You know what facts, I mean? You facts, would have facts. to, you, these people will have to trust you because they don't, like you said, that discernment. They don't just trust people. You got to see the, and, trust. and there ain't no morals today. Like on Tony Montana, on that part of that movie where he told, dude, I ain't killing no kids. And then he smoked his ass. Remember that? Yeah. Or oh, on that on that Scarface shit. Yeah, hell yeah. Now, I ain't killing no kids. See, I'm saying there was morals, bro. I remember back in the day when something was about to go down in the hood, bro. I'm telling you, bro. These these young gangbangers ain't lived the shit for yeah. real. Cause yeah. the the older homies, if they was trapping out a chick's crib, and they was. Basically, how motherfuckers even got trap houses was it was like, okay, y'all on Section 8, so your bills ain't that high and your rent ain't that high. Right. So, I'm like, give me this, give me, listen, you let us trap out of here, we're going to take care of your kids, and we're going to pay the bills. What woman, what chick ain't going to take that? And you from the hood and you just a ratchet ass. You got protection now. You got protection now. So, the homies is all in and out your crib, but you don't care. Your shit taken care of. You getting Jordan, your kid fresh as hell. Ain't nobody about to come over here and do nothing to you. Nobody. It's over with. Like, so that lifestyle, but when something was about to go down in the hood, the homies would give the pre warning and hey, take the kids in the crib. Y'all go in the house. It would be like respect for your your hood. And it would be like, we going to have to deal with this on our own. You know what I'm saying? But get the kids and shit in the crib because yeah. some shit about to go down. It was dry bars and everything happening. I, and that loss when the line got crossed, you know what I mean? Because because it's funny, exactly what you're saying. Like I speak on the you know the other side of it. Like I, I said this recently. I feel like there's no more honor amongst thieves, and I think that's when things change. Because you gotta think about it. That was the only agreement between thieves, between criminals, is we both criminals. So mm -hmm. I ain't gonna tell you. You ain't gonna tell me. I ain't gonna fuck with your operation. You don't Bruh. fuck with the church's money. You did. Oh God. Oh God. My first time going to jail. I ain't, I, I ain't sure. All I watch, bro, listen. Remember back in the day, lockdown and all that shit used to come on TV all the time? That was my thought process on jail. So when I was in the, in the car going to jail, I knew that I had a warrior spirit at that moment because I didn't know what was going to happen to me. I didn't know how jail operated. All I know is it was two straps and some dope and my ass was going to jail for them show. And when I went, Bro, my thought process got in the demon time immediately while I was in the car. Because mm -hmm. I knew I'm going to jail. So my thought process was like, damn. What if I, as soon as I walk in there, somebody like, where are you from? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I didn't know how I was going to operate. 
So, bro, oh, that's the part of the story I left out. I seen a nigga get, uh, a little girl got killed. It was an older dude in the, in the uh, cell with us. Mm-hmm. Quiet the whole time. I ain't say nothing. This this blood dude, he was kind of, he was from Lincoln Park. He was ignorant motherfucker. He said, he kept on making a joke about this little girl that had got killed. Like a bullet went through the window in Trevor Heights and killed some little girl. Okay. So the blood dude kept on making like a mockery of it because he got off the phone with somebody that did it or something. And he was just talking about it. He ended up getting into an argument with the dude. Now, mind you, he don't know nothing about this dude at all. He say something crazy to him, and all of a sudden, the older dude snapped. Then he brought out the real. He said, you know that that girl that you've been talking about for the last couple of days? That was my niece. Bruh, when I tell you that shit went left so quick, oh I was reading a, uh, some kind of magazine on my bed, like a mafia magazine or something. And the fight broke out, bro. I seen dude, they was scrapping, you know, wrestling around. And, you know, I don't know if you ever been to the workhouse, but that shit concrete and steel all up in that bitch. He took dude head and he was like banging this shit on the ground. Bam, bam, bam. I, bro, I seen blood shooting out the motherfucking eyeballs. Like, Jesus Christ. Both, like, you ever seen somebody get they, they eye busted and turn red? Yeah. Bro, his shit was all the way red like around the, the shits and uh he was finna kill him he went and got two coffee cups the plastic hard shits and he was like i'm about to bash this motherfucker's head in and everybody stopped him like no nah, i don't kill him bro you're gonna end up in here forever Da-da-da. so he was like making the dude tap out he was tapping out banging on the door trying to get out the thing and dude let him go he was like look i ain't gonna kill you but don't say shit else to me or i'm gonna kill your ass and he let him stay in there. But dude's energy was way different. Oh, yeah. He learned. Dude was asked who quick. started it with me first, like a couple of days ago. Mm-hmm. A couple of days before that happened. He had started some shit with me. And he was like, uh, he kept like shadow boxing, like swinging towards my face. Like, you know. Uh. And I was a quiet dude. I was in there with some Praetors. Praetors is a big ass family. One of the Praetors knew my cousin. So we got to talking, and he was like, oh, yeah, I know, homie. Woo, woo. So then me and him got cool. So at the time the dude was doing this, he like, you ain't got no hands. You ain't got no hands. Bruh, I don't talk. I just, I be like that silent, that nigga that just, I'm just trying to do whatever time I'm finna be doing up in here and get the fuck up out of here. Uh-huh. But dude kept doing that, and it irritated me to the point to where I didn't hit him. But I, I hit him with the work, though, because I had hands yeah. control. So I swung at him like 10 times, quick as hell, and he fell into the phone. And when he fell into the phones, he got he said, damn, bro, you do got hands. And then my nigga SP was like, bro, better stop fucking with homie. Then I, I had to take off, bro, I got into a couple of altercations in there. I had a crackhead try to play me like a sucker for real. He bit his girlfriend's nose off. On, the- on on huh? Maine and Ohio. They was crackheads. Oh, okay. Yeah. Bro, he got into an argument with his girl on the phone a couple hours before we got into it. And he was, t- made, like, arguing with her about cheating. She was a prostitute, come to find out. Oh, God. I'm like, man, you arguing about a chick getting out, getting money out. You in jail. <laughs> she fucking getting cracked and doing whatever she doing out there. Right. So, anyway, I brought that up after he tried to play me like a sucker. I'm like, bro, you bit a chick's nose off, and you ain't here complaining about a chick that's a prostitute talking about cheating. Cheating what? <laughs> this is what she do. So, anyway, we got into Lurch. the whole spiel, and uh-huh. this was the first time. I was quiet, so I never took my jail shirt off, so nobody seen my tattoos or none of that. But at that moment, I remember slapping my cars down on the table, got up, took my shirt off. Flip the jelly shoes off, and I'm like, bro, we can work. Like, and I want, I'm not even that type of dude. My whole hood to tell you, I was never like an active, like, I was always a defend myself dude. Right. You bring it to me, I'm gonna give it to you. But I ain't never was a like a go find the problem, like an instigator. Dude. Yeah, nah, I was never him. Like, I was always a stay in my bubble. I grew up in them days walking. You familiar with Kid Magic? 
Uh uh. Okay, so like he a vet, like Mixmaster Ice. Okay. From the old UTFO, Mixmaster Ice had got me on MTV. I won like a freestyle battle with the CNS with him. Nice. Kid Magic was on Livingston and Miller. I okay. went to the studio on Livingston, Ohio. These two blood neighborhoods I got to walk through to go make music every day. <laughs> so when you talking about, and I wasn't scared to wear my shit. So I had my dickies on, my blue shits and my chucks and I would walk over there and ain't nothing worse than hearing somebody on the porch like, hey, blood, damn, you don't know if you got the run, scrap, you don't know what's going to happen at that point. So like these, them is the times we grew up in. And today with the gentrification, when I hear people claiming gangs and being hardcore about it today, I'd be like, bro, shut, cut that shit out. Like you would have to go to West, to the West coast for that to still be valid. Cause right. here, gang banging ain't what it was back in the day. Right, right. So, yeah, so now I be trying to encourage people to just stop the shit, bro. It turned into living. neighborhoods, and then it turned into streets. Yeah, and now not people doing just that. be mad My, at each other. Bro, you ever you been to Old Town East lately? Oh, Oak and Eighteen. Yeah, that shit beautiful. <laughs> that shit never. I couldn't imagine that shit looking like that when I was growing up. Them, them <laughs> apartments that's right there on the corner was never open. Them shit was that shit was abandoned since I was a kid. That's crazy. So they finally actually did something with it and turned it into a whole. But I love going to my hood now because it's like I can go over here now. It's a better feel, better vibe. Yeah. I got a song where I said, man, uh, I said now that it's gentrified, I sell a different kind of dope on it or some type of shit because I be selling yeah. my clothes, music. Now you got to move different over there. You feel me? Man, what's so, your life? You know what I mean? Life. We got to switch it up and we got to learn and grow and destroy and rebuild that's the that's the process bro i'm gonna tell you about my like real talk i'm hoping that this podcast this interview right here give insight to life on a different level because of all the stuff we just talked about is stuff that honestly i don't i don't, can't even remember the last time i actually talked about all of this to a person yeah, yeah. I ain't, I ain't actually had this whole conversation with a nigga since anger management class. Wow. Like, and that shit was forever ago. Well, I do do therapy, so that's, I'm glad. I'm glad. That's dope, bro. So, like, I, I, <laughs> I think I therapeutic to myself. Like, nobody, yeah. uh, anger management helped me, don't get me wrong. Yeah. But when I thought I was battling some demons, there was somebody in anger management class that was talking about a, a vision that he would get and why he was demonic and why he kept doing what he was doing. And he drew a picture of what he'd be seeing. Nigga, when I tell you that shit was like, I thought I had some problems. Terrifying. <laughs> bro, I like, dude, bugged out. Bro, when, need I a was, hug. Bro, when I was locked up, there was a blood dude from Cleveland. Listen to this crazy shit. It was a blood dude from Cleveland while I was locked up. Looney Tune. He knew the Bible front and back. Could call out the first chapter, all that, and read it in his head. But when I'm talking about he was absolutely Looney Tune. Like, you know he was about to go to jail for like 40 you know, fucking years or something. I remember somebody was snoring. Fat dude. He was snoring, bro. Dude got mad at him for snoring. Woke him up. Told him, like, bro, you want to shut the fuck up in here. I'm trying. Now, mind you, we in a workhouse, bro. Like 30 people in a dorm. Right. How you going to expect everybody in here to be perfect people and whatever the fuck right. not bother you? Niggas trying to get comfortable. Man. I almost got into it because we was beating on the wall and I was rapping. And somebody was like, who want to fight? Y'all niggas making all kinds of noise. <laughs> Guard <laughs> up, yeah. But but dude, dude went to dude was basically telling him like, man, I'm fat. Like I, I, I snore and I got like, uh, he had some kind of like health condition too. Uh, but he didn't know this until dude actually tried to whoop his ass. So he starts snoring again, bro. Dude walked up to his bunk and I watched the whole shit happen. I was blown away. Man, he slapped him in the stomach. Woke him up. 
and got ready to beat on him. Dude pulled his eyeball out. Like, Jeez. boop. He said, bro, I can't fight you, man. I got a fake eyeball. Boop. And he, bro, he pulled his eyeball out and had it in his hand. And I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> Bugged out, bro. I seen a white dude get slapped so hard. Oh, he owed somebody some money or some shit. Uh-huh. S, but he owed SP money too. So he was SP's little sucker. But uh I guess the older crackhead nigga, he owed some a lunch or a dinner or two or something. Bruh, he slapped dude like straight up. It was the loudest slap I ever heard in my life. But he was so pale, bro. The red mark, you could see the five fingers on his face. <laughs> and, bro, he slapped him. His whole forearm print was red on his whole. Bro, the way my hand is right now, the red mark was. <laughs> I was Game like, God. <laughs> he slapped the shit out that motherfucker, wolf. But but SP stopped it like, nah, bro. He owed me first, if anything. Right, and he, slow down. And then he threatened dude like, yo, and you fuck with him again, I'm gonna get at you. And dude bowed down, and dude was way diesel than SP. But SP was crazy for real. So they had respect, man. Respect yeah, he had that respect for sure. That's the first time I seen that type of shit, and I was like, yo, jail was some other shit, like. I automatically got it in my head. If I get into it in here, I got to whoop your ass for real. Yeah. Because this is just that kind of place, bro. Like, either yeah. you're going to take a dumb L because everything concrete and metal in here. You you even fall trying to fight somebody. You can bust your own damn head open. Right. So I'm just, I don't know, man. To make it out of all of this and still be alive today and be at peace now, a lot of people don't understand it. You know what I'm saying? But I'm glad we had this conversation, G, because Me too. I wouldn't I wouldn't have been able to even articulate none of this shit without the right kind of person asking me these questions and shit. Yeah. yeah. But hopefully my journey get people to realize it. But everything I done said in this interview, if you listen to my list of music, you gonna hear every story I just told you in my music. So it'd be real. I talk about real. Bro, Tupac was my number one rapper. He was a Gemini like me. His creativity was like me. He a revolutionary like me. I'm all for saving ourselves. Fuck the government. Shit. All that. If we start a revolution, I want to be front and center. Right. If all my people walked out the house today... And I've seen thousands of us out in the street like, fuck this. We ain't taking this shit no more. Fuck the police. I be the. I would be so proud Fine. to step in the front of all of them. Up. Like, all right, I'm going to leave this because I've been waiting for this to happen. Right. <laughs> Bro, I got get suit nice, regular nice straps. Listen to this crazy shit, though. I'm going to tell you one more crazy thing before we conclude. All right. You know them red berries that used to be growing on bushes? And yeah, our yeah. parents used to say they was poisonous. Like, like cranberry, kind of? Yeah. Yeah. Them shits. I, you know, since I'm Native American, I'm thinking, like, how was we killing the colonizers at first when we, when our Native Americans was at war with them? Mm-hmm. They came over pricking the motherfucking things with the motherfucking pipes that, you know, most of the African tribes would spit the out blow the straw. Stick that shit in you like Ace Ventura, Pet Detective, how they was hitting him with them shits. And dabbing it with the poisonous toad and shit. And then, uh-huh. bro, I done been in Black Lake Woods thinking to myself, like, what if the whole world cracked off? How could we just be whacking motherfuckers with natural shit? I'm like, oh, yeah, this is it. We can get some pine cones, you know, the little pricky pine thingies. Yeah. Stick that motherfucker. We be out here doing some real live. <laughs> But, bro, I, I be thinking about this kind of shit when I'm in the woods. That's real shit. So I be like, bro, my mindset just be on some whole totally different shit sometimes. So it's just that warrior. I know I'm a reincarnation of somebody that was whacking the shit out of colonizers yeah. back in the day. Yeah. Same. So. Django, man. Yeah. <laughs> but we, we got it figured out. You know what I mean? And everything you said definitely came full circle. You know, even in the beginning with 
not one to compare. That's the beauty of intelligent people. We never have to. You know, Pac said it best. Like, I may not change the world, but I know I'm going to spark the mind of somebody who's going to change the world. That. That's probably the best quote he's ever said. You know what I mean? And I felt Dope. that. Dope. He was talking about us. He was talking about our generation. He knew we was coming. Facts. Facts. Ahead of his time, man. Yeah, the but same with Nip. Damn, you know, I talk about Nip every day. I quote Nip every day. He was different. Different. But it just goes to show, like like we were saying earlier, like you're going to get that target on your back. And everyone can't take that. People get out. Like if you're going to start a revolutionary, you got to stay one. That's not something you can retire from. Oh, God. And it was really one, too. And I still remember the line. He got a song called Love. And he said, fake niggas, I don't want your hugs. Fake niggas, I don't want you. And then he said, he said, I get five racks every night. What's the price on yours? That, what he said in that song, he had that conversation with me on MySpace. Mm. That's how I was like, bro, he talking the real shit. Because, mm. and then if you go back to an interview he did, I think it was either Rap City, The Basement, or with the next dude that was like Tigger, the okay. Myth Hitch dude. Okay. He had an interview where he was talking about how, bro, when you feel like you valued at that much, tell every club that you perform in you want five racks. He said, a lot of people going to tell you no because you ain't known, but a couple people going to tell you yeah. He said, after them couple people tell you yeah, and you do the show and you get paid that bread, then you can put money towards your marketing. Then when those other motherfuckers get a gist of you and you got your numbers up, they going to ask you to come perform, and you tell them 10 racks now. Hit them over the head. Yeah. I'm up. Bro, this is the conversation he had with me on MySpace, and then he had it in a, on an interview, and then he put it in the song. Then Nick was 17 shit. when he told me that shit. Yeah. Then he I'm did like, it. bro, he was ahead of his game. Yeah, he was, man. And I, and, and I think, again, it's, it's our melanin. You know, the goodness in his heart, the love. Like, the shit the day he died, he was showing love. Oh God! It's the love, you know what I mean, and that's that's a revolutionary. Like, I ain't afraid to die. <laughs> you did. But I'm, I'm, I don't think about it like that. Bro, I ain't afraid of UFOs, none of that. I wish yeah. niggas would come. Man, because I think they working for us and with us. I think that's why all these lies got spread. Cause exactly, bro. We had people who was on our side, you know, higher powers. You did, so they had to make their own higher powers. But I, I think now, every, I tell every living being. Mm -hmm. Most of us, our culture people, like we dealing with a lot of chicks with bad attitudes. We dealing with a lot of men that don't know how to like, finances don't make you a man. At all. Like you can be the most unhumble, disrespectful, ignorant, arrogant idiot thinking you know everything because you got money, but you don't have a soul. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So like when it comes down to it, in my mindset, I ain't afraid to die because I feel like I'm a spiritual being. I literally don't feel like I'm from this planet. Right. Uh, I feel like, you know, I'm a reincarnation of some, I came from somewhere else. My spirit definitely didn't come from just this earth. You know what I'm saying? Like I had to come from somewhere else because think about this logically, bro. How many people, if you went into a room of a hundred people right now, anywhere, and start talking about the stuff we just talked about, or spirituality, or anything. Only probably ten to fifteen percent of that room is even going to resonate with your ass. Yeah. So just think about the percentage of the population in the whole world that don't have that. They not woke at all. They don't care to be woke. They disrespect mm -hmm. woke people. So there's a small population of us that's even connected to the source of what we is. I the agree. other ones is in the dark. And they, they comfortable just waking up in the Matrix and living this everyday life, uh, not giving a fuck about themselves. And see, this where I sparked the mind at. I said, bro, now that I done dug up my family history so far back to where now I know where I came from, there's not a lot of people doing that. Right. Something sparked my mind and put God put something in me to be the one to find that out for my family's sake and my kids' sake 
to know the truth about my identity. Right. And theirs. I tell people, bro, if a nigga nut got millions of sperms and one of them motherfuckers made an egg and made a baby, you don't think you special and you motherfucking made it out of the millions of shits that was running for that egg? If you don't understand the logic of that and don't understand how special you is to even be here walking around, bro, dang it. If you went to the Million Man March and said, let's all race <laughs> and you won, <laughs> you don't think you special? Ego Fuck would be out of crazy. Here. Your pride would be nuts. Yo, come on, bro. It's, that's logic. Bro, I don't think nobody ever broke that shit down like that. They don't think about it like that, man. And that's the facts. I, I think of it this same way because even, you know, with that understanding, more people have not exist than that exists. There's been more people not born than has ever been born. And man. the numbers were always already. And then you get the black man. You know what I mean? Women I number. You know what I mean? So it's like we have to have this self-worth that we see now. I think where we're getting to now is we're realizing I can value myself and I don't have to devalue the next person. Facts. And see, I'm open to everybody's perspective. I had a chick uh, got mad at me because I, I, I talked about my lineage and stuff, told her I had good hair, and she got mad about me saying I, I had good hair. She was like, well, what is good hair? I said... If you feel like you got good hair, you got good hair. I'm not saying my shit is just better than your locks or the wooly hair right. from our African tribes or the East Africans that got hair like me. Or you have to have self-worth and value yourself. So how you going to get mad at me for loving the way God made me? Right. If you love the way God made you, you could have said, I got good hair too. And I'd have been like, you're right. Because mm -hmm. motherfucker, just because I said I got good hair don't mean you got good hair. I call myself the king of Ohio. You know how many motherfuckers argue me about that? I said, well, I ain't the only king in the motherfucking world. Right. I ain't the only king in Ohio. There's people that's just as valuable as me. So why is you mad at me for saying I'm the king of Ohio? Like I'm trying to override everybody else that's doing the same shit I'm doing. I'm not. I right. just work. I know my worth and who I am, and that's how I feel about myself. And I think you that's that pro that's that programming. You know what I mean? I, I like to I like to um, bring the facts. <laughs> you know, oh, yeah. and, and one of the facts and one of the truth is, I think America on average is at a seventh grade reading level. That's everybody. Adults. Uh, well, just, grade. just like the lady so, just said today, she said in schools, this you know agenda for the gays and the transgender shit just became a thing and popular these days and she said you got people in china and taiwan and places like this and they kids is in middle school learning quantum physics and we getting taught how to fucking be transgenders and shit now in these times and i'm like they she was like oh we are so lost as a people I can't wait for God to wipe this out. And everybody think that God going to wipe this earth out by wiping it out. No, he's going to get rid of the soulless negative energies on this planet. It's in the books. Anybody can read this book called Censoring God. It's called Censoring God. Bro, if you ain't read that book, I think I sent that shit to you. Before. Yeah, you did. You did. I Bro, when you read that, that shit compares ancient tablets the Romans that tried to burn the words that they didn't put in the Bible, they tried to hide the spirituality about our people and that the ancient people from here was black. They tried to burn all of this shit and some of it was recovered. Right. Some of it wasn't. But they, they compare stories from different countries and cultures, the ones that match, and then they compare the European version of the Bible today that left out six, seven books where they talk Man. about aliens and spirituality. This shit is supposed to be in the Bible. And witchcraft and all that good all stuff. All of that shit is in the Bible. 
And where, but where they messed up too is it's in our DNA. It's That's in our DNA, up. bro. So me even talking about this means I unlocked a part of my hidden DNA. Yep. Me finding out my family lineage is all the way back to 15, 1400s. I unlocked a part of my DNA somehow, some way. It's what I consider deja vu. It's when we have visions that we can't explain, when we've seen places we've never been. It's a past <laughs> life that we've been to, but like all magic, you know, shit, even like how they do Christmas and shit, you got to believe for Santa to work. You know, that's how magic works. You have to actually believe in what you're doing. You have to be intentional. You can't just randomly find some lit shit. You got to be a lit individual. That's facts. That's you know facts. what I mean? And this new day and age, you know, it's difficult for people to do that. It's the fear one. But I think it's the knowing. Once you become the knowing, you always have to be the knowing. Once That's you know right. better, you can't backtrack no more. Yep. And what they say, if you know better, you do better. The yep. truth is that you free. All of them quotes is in my brain. Them on my back, I got it tattooed on me and it say uh it's a quote. I can't I can't really put the name to who where I got the quote from, but it's uh life ain't about waiting on a storm to pass. Life is about learning how to dance in the rain. Ooh, that's, that's where that I live my life by that. So that's when I told you like me being homeless and me still keeping positive energy. Mostly it's because of that quote. That's real. That's deep. So yeah, man. But this conversation, bro. Was yeah, dope. is there anything you my... want to leave the people with? We I'm gonna bring you back. I, I like to, I do panels. I do uh, battle of the sexes. I think three women, three men, and we just have conversations about life shit. Okay, um, okay. So I'm definitely gonna bring you back, bro, for sure. This this was enlightening, but a part of me felt like it would go this way. <laughs> so man, yeah, real talk, real talk. I I'm felt glad like we that did too. this. I'm glad we did this. It was a it was a weird day. <laughs> and, and 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 I think this is why you know we were merging energies. We were bringing you know universes together, and this is this is what we need. You know that's why I tell black people like we've had our time for regret, embarrassment, resentment, revenge. Like it's time to leave with love. It's time to unify. It's time to come together. I think we are the best parts of the generations that led up to us, the '60s, '70s, '80s, '90s. We 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 are all of that. You we right. all of that, you know what I mean? And I think it's our time, man. I'm, I'm going hard. It's our time. Bro, this, this, I they, I did the wolf thing for you too, didn't I? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so like everything in my crib, bro, it's wolves all in this motherfucker. That's my but spirit this, animal. That's me, the wolf, man. That's me. This me right here. Yeah. Okay. If I, I turn into it, a wolf and start fucking some shit up, I'm going to look like this nigga right here. Yeah. So... <laughs> like real shit, but this is my total man. I don't know if you hip to that, but that's a Native yeah. American thing. Come to find 100%. out, my lineage traced back to the first Cherokee tribe called the Wolf Clan. Nice. Bro, check this out before we go. Uh huh. The Wolf Clan was meant to enlighten the people, and it was for the people to give messages to the people. But then my name, my mama named me Gabriel. The same thing I am for Yahshua. Gabriel is the messenger of God, the one that he's told to give the messages. You know, he had certain messengers. Right. But Gabriel was an angel who passed messages around the same way. And then I find out my lineage is the Wolf Clan, which had the same purpose. So, see, me unlocking what I, what I was back in the day transpired of what my name is and how I act today. So I know I'm a reincarnation of somebody from back that long ago. So this shit real, my nigga. And you know, real. it's weird to some people, but to me, you know what I mean? My motherfucking my, 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 my shit, dog. Hey. <laughs> but yeah, I appreciate this convo, bro. And I love to come back and um Yeah. I appreciate you, bro, man. King I'll... Thunder is my everything, bro. Like people can search me King Thunder on Google. And my whole shit to pop up. You'll find my YouTube and Instagram, all that shit, because I, I got the verified Google page now. So it do pop up as I'm a musical artist and all that. Yeah, I'm going to share it for them. I'm going to send it around. And it, this was a pleasure, bro. Anything you want to leave the people with? Uh, Man, just stay blessed and highly favored and powerful, man. You know, let go and let God when you're going through some things. And, you know, we shouldn't get 
too overwhelmed about our hardships because if we believe in God and we got faith, he going to make sure that he get us and guide us to that right path because I got to that point just two weeks ago where I had to shed some tears and just ask God why, like, damn, bro, I know I ain't a bad person and I'm doing this, that, and the third why I got to keep going through this, but I understand that God give his toughest challenges to his strongest soldiers. Yes, sir. And to see if you still keep the faith in him. And I ain't went back to the darkness since 2010 was the last time I went to jail. And when I woke up in jail that next, now I tell you in 2010, I did not give a fuck. When I went to jail, I was drunk and I gave, I didn't give a shit about nothing. That next day I woke up in jail, Something completely changed, and I never went to jail since. And since then, it took me 17 years, and my record is clean today. I'm legal to carry. I done changed my whole entire life. So for all the people that got felonies and they they years in, I went through a program at the King's Art Center and Urban League, and they got free lawyers, and they helped me get my record clean. Don't give up, dog. Because if you keep your faith, shit will work out. But if you fall back into the darkness, God is going to let you go with the devil if that's where you want to be at. That's a fact. Everybody that did girl? me wrong and made me feel like I needed to get rid of them, I let it go and let God. And eventually, they face their own karma of being uh -huh. whoever it was they they was put the energy they was putting out they got back uh -huh. i stepped out the way and i chose to just be at peace and then i will block a motherfucker in two seconds the moment you start yelling and arguing or treating me different than what i want to feel like my soul need uh -huh. you about i ain't gonna have no beef with you but instead of beefing with you and fighting you can just fucking get away from me yep i will just cut you off and shed my skin Get on up out of here. People that want to box or fight, I'm not doing no street fighting. We can do the boxing ring and put money on it, and we can just train for a couple months and then do it. Yeah. But I'm not trying to do that, but I will for the bread. Yeah. <laughs> but, <laughs> but today I feel like just peace is – peace and love is our – highest enlightenment that we can have so that's what i'm walking in man and i'm walking by faith walking by god so i think that we all get to that point we can change the vibration of the whole world if all of us as a people did it at the same time mass meditation mm -hmm. i actually want to start that at franklin park where i take a big ass speaker out there like i'm gonna perform and i just play frequency and we all shut the fuck up and meditate just sit there and listen to god we can change the vibration of this whole earth doing that. But guess what? When I start doing that, I know the police is going to come try to shut that shit down. Uh -huh. The government is going to hate seeing a Franklin Park full of people randomly just outside humming and shit. Happy? Yeah, they don't want that. They don't want that. <laughs> but, you know, God bless the people, man. And I hope they get something out of this interview and shit. Yes, this sir, they was will. a last interview, dog. Hey, it was, man. It was. I, I really appreciate it, bro. I want to say congratulations. You know, I being to this you, point, listening to you speak, bro. I see the light. I see the aura. I see why what other people seeing you. You dig? Like, thank you, man. Thank you for man, bro. Thank you, bro, for even reaching out to have me on this joint, man. Yes, sir. Oh, man, Hunter, and I, I wish you all the success and shit. And I'm always gonna support what you're doing, bro. You got the flowers, dog. My guy, thank you so I much. Hit all me right, up. Bro. Send me the link to this so I can share it all that. All right, I got you, boy. Put it on Enjoy YouTube. Your night. Yes, sir. Y'all must be on that soon. Yes, sir. Stay safe, bro. All right, boy. You too. 100. All right.